What the fuck is the Switch? This is the Nintendo Switch. And this is how well my game City of Springs currently runs on it. And this is how well it should run. Did I ever tell you about my friend Boris? He gets us those extra rations. You're sleeping with him, aren't you? No, not yet anyway. <laughs> the Switch is old and slow. And the worst part is that it only has a total of four gigabytes of memory shared between the CPU and the GPU. So what kind of hell did I drag myself into with my new ultimate challenge for 2025 to port City of Springs to the Nintendo Switch? I think it is about time that I do some actual measurements to get a grip on how far-fetched the goal actually is. To do this, I need to know the CPU and GPU render times and the total memory usage. Since the Switch has the RAM and VRAM combined and the absolute lowest quality settings of City of Springs uses at least 3GB of RAM and 5GB of VRAM, totaling to about 8GB, and that is on the main menu alone. Due to loading and unloading the different chunks of the world environment, the combined RAM and VRAM usage fluctuates between 8 and 12 gigabytes during normal playtime. So on the memory side, we're a factor 3 over budget. Not taking into account that ideally you should always have a little bit of spare wiggle room so that the game will not crash if any unforeseen memory spike happens. So is it even feasible? I'm fairly sure that in its current state, City of Springs has a fair amount of unnecessary memory usage. The performance optimization that I've done in the past never really got into the realms of memory optimizations, so I can probably shave off a few gigabytes. In absolute worst case scenario, I could even remove all normal and metallic textures, saving up even more memory room. So yeah, I think that even while I'm a factor 3 over the memory budget, I think this could be doable. To measure the GPU and CPU side, I needed to have the game actually boot up. So I tweaked it a bit, so now that it loads up without any of the 3D environment chunks, just the bare necessity, saving just enough memory to not make the switch crash. <laughs> and it runs! At an absolute minimum, I want the game to run at a steady 30 frames per second. And to get that, the GPU render time has to be at least 33.3 milliseconds or even lower. But even without any of the environment, the GPU render time is over 100 milliseconds. Ouch! Luckily, I can easily add in a fast spatial upscaler like FSR1 or SDSR1 and set it to ultra performance and wham, now we get a solid 44 milliseconds. It looks like crap and it's still not enough to get a steady 30 frames per second, but at least we're getting closer. But how much would the environment impact the GPU render time? I can test it on the Switch due to it crashes instantly due to the high memory usage of the environment. So I'll just have to guesstimate this in the Unity editor by playing the game in the editor and measuring the render time it takes to run the game with and without the full environment and then interpolate this to the switch. I do get an average GPU time of 77, which is about a factor two and a half too high. Crap! Obviously, there are a lot of visual effects that I can potentially disable on the Switch. Unity's default post-processing effects are notoriously heavy on older platforms, and I am working on a new upscaler that can maybe squeeze a few more frames out of the poor Switch's GPU. But I am a bit worried here. Downtuning the visuals too far will make it absolutely unplayable. There is one super secret, not really secret, but actually pretty well known trick though. Developers are free to use a higher GPU clock speed, making the GPU essentially 25% faster. But it makes me wonder why this isn't the default option. There has to be a downside. It'll probably drain the battery quicker. But at least I can always use this as some sort of last resort if needed. <laughs> you know what, let's just keep acting like everything is good news so far. Onto the CPU. Here I got lucky. Well, at least a little bit. I tweaked my upscalers in such a way that the game is downscaled by a factor 10, which makes it absolutely unplayable. 
but this way I can read the CPU performance the most reliably. Because if the GPU render times are actually higher than the CPUs, then the CPU will match them, which will totally mess up the experiment. The CPU render time is about 35 milliseconds, very, very close to, well, the goal of 33. But guesstimated with the environment enabled, it's still a whopping 66 milliseconds. But no matter, as I'm only a factor 2 too high, which is actually pretty great. To sum it all up, in order of severity, I need to make City of Springs use three times less memory. I also need to make City of Springs two and a half times less heavy on the GPU. And lastly, I need to make City of Springs run twice as fast on the CPU as it does now. And that is only to make it run at 30 frames per second on the absolute lowest quality settings that I currently offer on the PC version. To place the whole thing in a bit of perspective on my PC with the same quality settings and resolution that I used on the Switch, the game runs over 200 frames per second. Because yeah, of course I already did a lot of performance optimization. As Harrison Ford clearly and rightfully states, Boof. However, it is not only bad news, as during the makings of this video I actually found quite a lot of potential memory optimizations, so I think that optimizing the memory side will be doable. The performance optimizations that I previously did were focused specifically on releasing the game on PC, not taking into account the ultra low specs of the Switch. And generally, Switch users seem to have a bit lower expectation of the visual fidelity of games, at least when talking about fancy post-processing effects, and due to the fact that it's just a small handheld, I can probably get away with removing some of those heavy effects, which should help a little bit on the GPU side. And then there are the potential speed benefits of Unity 6 combined with URP and the render graph and all those goodies, but how much that will actually help is a total unknown. I think it is Realistic to say that it will be a very difficult job, but I'm sure that I can manage to decrease the total memory usage to something below 4 gigabytes. And I'm very hopeful that in combination with my new upscaler STSR2 and replacing Unity's standard post-processing effects with something a little bit more mobile friendly will be a very, very big step into being able to at least play City of Springs at a mediocre frame rate of 20. And we'll just have to go from there. I'm cautiously optimistic and more importantly it'll be lots of fun optimizing the shit out of this game and then I'll probably learn loads of new optimization tricks that I can then share with all of you. It's good to know exactly what I'm up against this year but for now I'll have to focus most of my attention on getting ready for the Steam Early Access release on PC, Mac and Linux and yes that includes the Steam Deck. So I hope you like this video once again like subscribe and all those kinds of stuff and see you again next week